And a hearty Monday to you. Welcome, Dave Lamont. This is your Nooner with me. And I thought I'd get right into a little football talk today. It's been a little while. And there's an interesting article, and that's a cattail, by the way. I fully expect uh, this is Bonnie to show up at any moment. Um, there's an interesting article that came out in The Athletic, written by a guy named Mike Sando. And what he does every year and has done for the last several years is does a column on quarterback tiers, T-I-E-R-S, tier one, two, three, four, boop, five. And I thought, you know, and I before I even opened it, I thought, I'm going to talk about this today. This is distracting, I am sure. And who's going to be in the very, very top? And it's a lot of people who you think it is but what was the big thing what's the big mystery in south florida what's going to be the most uh, sports story of the year good or bad will be Tua tonga vailoa and this season with the dolphins they've certainly given him perhaps an improved running game perhaps an improved offensive line certainly an improved receiving core the defense was already pretty good so there's some optimism around here but it is also tinged with incredible skepticism about whether he's going to be a superstar or even a, a star or just good, because it's kind of hard to tell. Mixed in with the highlights or lowlights, as is almost always the case with any young quarterback. All right, let's be fair about this, which I know isn't easy for people to do. So I thought, okay, how far down the list will I go before I encounter to his name? Now, the names at the top, and I'm going to read just about the entire list to you. I'm not going to read every comment or anything like that. You know, that, that, that's going to take days, and it's not that important. But, you know, who do you think is number one, number 10? Where's Tua? Okay, so let me explain how this is done, by the way. This is not one guy sitting down going, hmm, I think I like Josh Allen. I like this guy. I like Aaron Rodgers. I like Brady. It's not like that. 50 coaches and executives in the NFL vote on this. All right. So six general managers, eight head coaches, 10 evaluators, 12 coordinators, six quarterback coaches, and seven executives who deal with things like game management, analytics, and salary cap. And then four votes came from one team's personnel department. Naturally, Nobody here is identified. All right. So if 35 quarterbacks in the NFL, that includes one or two people that are listed as packages, 35. All right. Tier one, that's, you know, the platinum standard. Tier five is crap. I don't think anybody is a tier five. One unanimous tier one selection. In other words, Every one of 50 people voted this guy number one. For, I believe, if I'm reading this right, the second year in a row, pardon my looking down there for a second, and three of the last five years, Aaron Rodgers. There you go. The eighth time in nine years of this quarterback tier article, he's finished no worse than tied for the top spot. All right? The, one quote I will read you, one of the defense coordinators weighed in and said, I can't wait to rate him a two. That will be like the favorite day of my career. That's the quote from this coordinator. So I get it. I don't know what Rodgers is going to be like without Devontae Adams this year. No one does, not even Rodgers. And that's going to be one of the bigger NFL questions in the overall picture. Six time in nine years, he's unanimous tier one. They even talk about his smirk. <laughs> so, all right, number one. Number two, Pat Mahomes, who was not unanimous. One person voted him as a tier two quarterback. And there is a, a, a tinge of skepticism without Tyreek Hill. They talk about uh, if he has a flaw, it's that sometimes he's, he's too quick to go to the ad lib if things break down. I don't know if that's too bad. Um, but other than that, we'll see how his mentality changes with that Tyreek Hill, who's now in South Florida. 
So we'll see if Mahomes shows a little more patience and or if Travis Kelsey winds up at 300 catches this year. Number three surprised me a bit, Tom Brady. Yeah. Only eight people put him in tier two. Uh, one quarterback's coach says he is that offense. He has an all-star team around him, but look at how that team oozes confidence now that he's back. They are a contender again this year, and it's all because of him and his mindset. Can they protect him? I didn't even realize that Brady last year led the NFL in completions, attempts, yards, and touchdowns at 105 years old. So he had five game-winning drives last year. That's a career high. Fourth, Josh Allen, Buffalo Bills. He's going to be a pain for the Miami group out there and for the Jets and for the Patriots. So number four, by the way, all of these make sense to me. I might have had Brady a little lower because, but I'm judging him on his age more than anything else. Josh Allen is called a better version of Lamar Jackson. A little erratic as a thrower, and he is ascending. Number five, this one's going to sting, Miamians. Justin Herbert, yeah, fifth. He jumped out at tier two. Only two guys made it up to tier one this year. Here's one of them, Justin Herbert. One offensive coach says he's the best pure thrower of the three young quarterbacks. That's Herbert, Allen, and Burrow. Notice two, I guess, left out of that conversation. The guy said, I didn't realize he was that athletic. I saw a freaking stud in our game, the competitive spirit and the athletic ability. He does, that guy does have a hose, by the way. He, he does have a massive arm. Um, so everybody's online with this guy being a top tier quarterback. All right, number six, the other newcomer. No, not yet. Joe Burrow. Duh. Makes perfect sense to me. 30 games starting, four of those now in the playoffs, including a Super Bowl. You know, last year, you know what the over-under was on the Bengals last year? Six and a half for six for wins. And they're the Super Bowl runner-up. They love how he's accurate, he's calm, and he will take a hit. Of course, with that offensive line, what choice does he have? So there are concerns, naturally, because he's young. But he, the one knock on him, apparently, is he predetermines his throws. And that does sound redundant. But in other words, if you can shake him out of his original idea, he, can, he, he is vulnerable. And that's true for a lot of these guys. Now, that's tier one. That's it. Those six guys. Okay. I haven't got the two yet. Number seven, tier two now, Matt Stafford. Okay. Um, he actually moved up. Notice some of the guys I haven't mentioned yet either. All right. So Stafford is uh, number seven. Great defense and special teams and a, a quarterback who played on a better football team. One voter said he has the best arm I've ever seen. Number eight. The new quarterback in Denver, Russell Wilson, who drops uh, out of tier one. So this is something I never knew. This is according to a general manager. Who knows? Maybe it's the Seattle general manager. Hell, the difference with Russell is he is a lot more high maintenance. He's got the entourage. He needs an office at the facility, the extra hotel rooms on the road, all that stuff. It will be interesting how the dynamic works with a rookie head coach and a rookie offensive coordinator and how they gel. Now, a lot of people think that the last couple of years, Wilson was in the wrong place because Seattle wanted to run the ball more. And this guy is a terrific quarterback, a great thinker on the run. Uh, to me, I compare him, you know, for you old-timers out there, to Fran Tarkenton because they both had great legs and they both made things happen and they were quick thinkers. And that's what Wilson is. So it might take this is an interesting year for him. This is another, by the way, I think big picture NFL story is Russell Wilson in a new team, a team that desperately needed a quarterback, a good quarterback, and got one. Probably a likely Hall of Famer in Russell Wilson. So let's see. Or is he on the way down? And Denver caught him at a bad time. Number nine surprised me. But we have to look at this as just the football player if it's possible, and that's Deshaun Watson. Now, 
we have forgotten due to all of his legal troubles that before all of this hit the fan, he was a good quarterback, like real good. A lot of teams wanted him, including the locals. He's wound up with Cleveland. He, somebody gave him a tier five vote because the, nobody knows what to do with the guy because we don't know how long he's going to be suspended for, if at all. It could be, you know, we hear two games, you hear two years, you hear, there's a million solutions here. None, but we have no answers. We have guesses. So a lot of people can't believe the contract size he got because of all of this. Um, at 26 years old, so he's got that going for him, which is nice. But one defense coordinator said, I know he's all screwed up and screws in quotes, so you know what the guy really said. But he is a one. I mean, just rating him as a football player, he is a one. You could put the game on him. They were bad and losing in Houston because it was, but it wasn't because of him. And remember, there were a lot of teams interested in him. So that's number nine. Number 10, t- he, no, Lamar Jackson. Forgot about him, didn't we? And the knocks on him are the same ones. He actually was passed by Stafford, Herbert, and Burrow. He is very unique, though. And there's really hardly anybody like him. Uh, here's a defense coordinator who said, you cannot go into a game and not account for this guy. We are meeting with people every offseason to find out how to defend this type of offense. But at the same time, I can totally see why you would go from a one to three on him. If he has to drop back and throw, it's not the same. But if he's on rhythm and they are running and they are running play action, if you can't account for that dude, he is going to kill you. Remember, he's an MVP in 2019. But this year, he had eight tier one votes and eight tier three votes. A negative, if he has to pass to win the game, they ain't winning the game. That's the negative on him. His postseason numbers aren't that good. So, but number 10. Number 11, to, uh, nope, Dak Prescott. Forgot about him, didn't you? Unless you're a Cowboys fan. And why would you be? Seriously. All right, so we'll move on from Dak Prescott. Number 12, it has to, no, Derek Carr. Now, Derek Carr, this is the second best average of his career. And last year, you don't know, forget, his coach quit. He had, uh, you know, an arrest of a teammate for a DUI, a fatal DUI that he allegedly committed and made the playoffs. They think he's close to tier one, some of these evaluators, but he just doesn't have quite the ability to rise above when things aren't bad, when things are not good, I should say, which is what Rodgers, Mahomes, and others can do. And a study conducted last season, according to this article, showed the car got worse support from his own defense and special teams than any of 41 quarterbacks with at least three years as a starter over the past decade. The worst. That's number 12. 13, Kyler Murray. Okay. Interesting guy. Very exciting. Uh, streaky is one of the words that comes up with Kyler Murray. Had a, had a bad playoff game. I'll tell you that. Um, great with his feet. The problem with the as a pocket passer, which is still important to these guys because he's not big, uh, is an issue, but he's pretty exciting and there's still improvement to come. 14. This surprised me. Nope, not him. Matt Ryan now with Indianapolis in case you missed it. And the funny thing is you read about him and they think, well, his arm's 37, his arm isn't as strong, but we're going to rank him 14. Okay. That's tier two, folks. Still haven't gotten to it. Let's check out tier three. You like this one, don't you? 15, Kirk Cousins. Now, he could not get along with his coach and the coach couldn't get along with him. They have a new head coach there. They have receiving talent. This could be a very good year for Kirk Cousins, potentially. He does, for fantasy purposes, briefly to go to that end, he's not a bad guy to have at all. They have to think that it's going to be a better relationship for him. All right, that's 15. 16, this surprised me. No, not yet. Jimmy Garoppolo, handsome Jimmy. Here's a punch in the gut, Dolphin fans. A coach said, reminds me of Ryan Tannehill. Wins games, doesn't play for the opponent, 
teammates respect him, the exact kind of guy we find ways to kick off the team. Still don't know what the Niners are going to do. They told him to go ahead and seek a trade, buddy. Have a nice day. Seventeen, Brian Tannehill. We'll move on. Eighteen, New Mac Jones, New England. That's the tenth best debut among forty-nine newcomers in the last seven years. All right. Mac is going to make good decisions, but I don't think he can carry the game by himself. Yeah, no kidding. They did make the playoffs. You forget. Others say, you know, some some were impressed with that. Others are like, eh. If Mac Jones wasn't in New England, if he was in Jacksonville, would we even know him? Would we care about him? Number 19, couldn't believe this. Baker Mayfield. And it's it's exactly what you think on these opinions. Divided as hell. I think he's three with an upside. He needs to get humbled fast or his career is going to be over. Okay? Something is missing here, and I don't know what it is, said a head coach. Number 20, tied for number 20. Certainly it has to be two a time. It's Jalen Hurts. Philly. Jumped 10 spots in last season. Okay? Physically, mentally tough, consistent, just not a great passer. Serious about his work. They did a nice job adjusting the offense for him. But a lot of people think that he can still sneak into the next tier. Tied for 20th, Carson Wentz. Whew, boy. This is Carson's third team in 13 months. He's now in Washington. He continues to sink down the tier list, and understandably. I don't know how he is still in the NFL. He just happened to be in Philly at the right time. Washington's paying him $28 million for this season. They're not that smart there anyway, as we've talked about. Jared Goff is 22. Where's Tua? Where? Jared Goff, Lions. 23, certain. Nope, Trevor Lawrence. And Trevor had a weird year because of all the Urban Meyer stuff and how bad Jacksonville is or was. No, 23. And they like the fact that he's got a different head coach in Doug Peterson. 24, certainly this has to, no, Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston, who had some pretty good moments last year before he got hurt. He was 14 touchdowns and three interceptions before he had that ACL injury last year. But here's a guy coming off of a major injury who's rated higher than Tua in this tier system. That's it for Tier 3, kids. We're now at Tier 4. The definition of a Tier 4 quarterback could be an unproven player or a veteran who ideally would not start all 17 games. 25th. Not yet. Justin Fields. The Bears. I'll just read this to you. Exceptionally smart and should have no trouble learning a new offense, but lacks a natural feel for the game. Oh, new offensive coordinator, we'll see. Ladies and gentlemen, number 26 in tier four, there he is, Tua Tonga Vailoa. I'll read it to you. Skepticism continues to engulf Tonga Vailoa. Last offseason, voters placed him in tier four partly because they didn't have enough information to place him elsewhere. This offseason, they placed him there because they've seen enough to say he doesn't belong higher. <laughs> Oh, now to parrot what I said earlier, and the offensive coach says the setup for success with a running game, defense, offensive line, and the impact players and skilled positions. If there's ever a time for him to be successful, it is this season. What is success? Staying healthy and leading his team to the playoffs. What voters don't like is ability to process quickly enough to protect himself. They question how well he is at identifying protections coverages and what they call mic points, middle linebacker, which blamed him for getting hurt against Buffalo when he missed a pass rusher. The quarterback's coach says he's a guy that I'm still holding on to the edge of my chair when I'm watching him play. I'm still cheering for him, and I'm just hoping it doesn't implode. 
He's got to get it done. Now, new offense, quarterback-friendly coach, improved running game. The idea is to make quick, easy decisions. This could be very good for Tua. But it's interesting, and I wanted to point that out, not because I'm anti-Tua. I'm just pointing out what others are saying. My opinion of him is somewhat incomplete as well. Not what I think matters all that much, but it matters to me because the injuries. And then he'll go through a stretch of two games in a row, and then he'll have an absolute cluster bomb of a bad game. By the way, you want the rest of the Baltimore Colts, Davis Mills, 27, Zach Wilson, 28, Trey Lance, 29, 30, was Daniel Jones. Ooh, boy. And he went down. Uh, Marcus Mariota, who looks like he's going to be the man in Atlanta, perhaps. Sam Darnold, uh, Mitch Trubisky, Drew Locke, who's now in Seattle, and Tier 5 in Seattle, Geno Smith. So there's your quarterback tier ratings, better or worse, 26. I'll say this. I can't recall a Dolphins season with more attention on a single player since Marino. I mean, Ricky Williams got a lot of attention, but he's a running back. For a quarterback position, once, once Marino turned out to be Marino and had his breakout, then the pressure was on him, but he delivered pretty much right to the end of his career. He was a massive, massive threat and put up huge numbers and stole some victories that a lot of quarterbacks wouldn't have stolen. So this is the position that Tua finds himself in. And from pretty much now on, and we're starting to get into NFL training camp days, you're going to get, if you're a Dolphins fan or you live in South Florida, you're going to be Tua'd to death. And how he responds to all of that by all accounts, a perfectly good human being. But will he be a perfectly good quarterback? And if he isn't, and if Justin Herbert continues to look great, this organization is going to get hammered with criticism like never before, even in the years that they went 1-15. and 15. It's a fascinating, fun little study. I thought I'd share it with you today because it just drew my attention immediately because it wasn't just some half-assed, slapped-together piece of work. I mean, this is a lot of work that goes into it, and a lot of intelligent football minds, whomever these people are, they're certainly qualified to talk about the position. So, 26th, if he's ranked higher on the list next year, moves up a tier, then all went well. And if he didn't, there's going to be tiers all right. That'll do it. See ya.